All of Detroit sports teams live on Woodward. All of Detroit sports coverage lives on Woodward Sports. Driving the best in Detroit sports coverage. Welcome back to Chop and Puck. I am Michael Gentry. That is Spencer Raxter. Up, After a few little weeks break, we are finally back, and we are happy to be back. Very it's been happy. it's been a long couple weeks, but we have had the NHL playoffs. You got the Red Wings at World. There's a lot lot going on in the hockey world, so we're going to talk about it today. First things first, JB. We have a special little Red Wings tweet that I sent you about the Red Wings, and some of these players, Spencer, are shining. Mm-hmm. One of these players contracts up after next year so we're going to get into that later but jb if you could just throw out that tweet i sent you mr kubalik and joe valino on a canada team where you probably didn't expect his name to be you know up there producing with given the roster they have a lot of players but joe valino shining but granted he's got four points plus three raymond cider to assist and mata so i mean that Spencer, that's an awesome sign. Obviously, you didn't expect some of these guys to even play Mm -hmm. at Worlds. They were going to take a little break over the summer. But I just want to get your thoughts on that. Obviously, you do wish they kind of had a break. They rested their bodies. They get ready for this next season in which we hope is a playoff season. But I still think this is good, especially for guys like Raymond and Sider. Sider especially was supposed to be one of the players sitting out, and that would have been more of one of the players that you wish did sit out to rest his body because that man was grinding all season, yeah. led the Red Wings ice time, everything like that. But for a guy like Lucas Raymond, you're hoping next year is the year mm-hmm. where you finally see him break out. And uh, Coach Alon talked about this to end the season. He said this summer is going to be a huge season for guys like Lucas Raymond and others. So to see Lucas Raymond going out there, having success, getting his scoring touch a little bit back, I love to see that. Spence, what are you thinking? Yeah, I like it too. And obviously, like you said, Sider logged a lot of minutes this year, so you would have liked to see him sit out. But this just this means more for these guys. Like yeah. it's, it's like the World Baseball Classic and different things like that. Even the Olympics to to a lesser degree, like from the Olympics, but it still means more. You're playing for your country. You're trying to put your name out there. And you see the guys going out there shining. Kubi leading the entire world's in, in points. points. He's got 10 points. He had a hat trick the other day. It's, it's impressive to see these guys going out there and putting up numbers when you're like I said, it means more for them. It means more for him to score a hat trick for his country than it would be for the Red Wings. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, you'd like to see them get a little time off, maybe maybe go out there and rest, recover their bodies. But it could jumpstart some of these guys. Like yeah. Kubelik had a, had a very hot start at the beginning of the season, kind of tapered off there a little bit. But you get in something like this, you get that confidence, you, you get all hype sh- shown out like that with him and Lucas Raymond. It could jumpstart their next year, getting that feeling of putting the puck yeah. in the net. Raymond. And that was one guy that I was hoping and I'm glad that he did play because he did people are were really harsh on Lucas Raymond's mm-hmm. season overreactions underreactions whatever but he was a guy that you needed to go out there and show something so I'm really glad that he did that and for a guy like Dominic Kubelik one great point he did start out this season very very hot and then you've seen him even play fourth line minutes down the stretch mm-hmm. of the end of the season then he got his way back up so for a guy to go over there and be able to grasp some consistency and then like I said this guy he's on a next year is his last year with the Red Wings yep. so it, God forbid if the Red Wings are bad he will probably be traded but if the Red Wings are good and he plays like this and he stays consistent throughout the year this is going to be a guy that's going to be on the Red Wings roster. So, like, you cannot shy away from what he's doing and what he brings on the power play. Mm-hmm. Kubelik's shot is one of the best, and I like I love to see it out of a guy like Kubelik, man. Like, yeah, you're right, man. He's got one of the best shots on the team. He 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 is imperative on the power play, kind of learning under the wings of, of a David Perron, yeah. and like, Same thing it's, with it's awesome to see him start to get out like this. Hopefully, he can keep it going because. You know, Steve Eisenman's building an army in Detroit. Like he's building oh, yeah. just a, a, a roster full of players that are going going to go out there and contribute. And Kubalik has shown that he can score thirty goals in this league. Kubalik has shown that he can perform on the highest level. So if next year he goes out there, he continues that pace he set at the beginning of the year this year. You could see him getting a nice little extension and maybe being you know a second line, third line guy on this team and getting some power play reps, maybe first team power play. So I'm I'm excited to see what he can do. Hopefully he can continue the success that he had at the beginning of the year last year where 
um, this year and, yeah. and next year he could just sustain that throughout the whole season because that is an important guy for this team you need those you know 20 even 30 goal scorers down there in the in the second third even fourth line Absolutely. if you want to compete you want to win in the NHL and especially in the playoffs you need contribution uh, contributions from everywhere yeah. and he's a guy that can do that and for a, a team that struggled vastly on the power play over the past few years Dominic Kubalik was one of your bright spots on that. Mm-hmm. And even though he was just posting up, ripping shots half the time at the goalie, that is su- people are accounting for him on the ice. Yeah. And in the past for the Red Wings, you can't say that about a lot of players. So I do love that you got David Perron, a veteran on the power play. You've seen how great he was on this season. Now you give uh, Lucas Raymond another year to learn under him, kind of take some things from him. So I love that. And I love for a guy like Joe Valino too, because a lot of people are saying Joe Valino doesn't really have a future for the Red Wings. But I said it all year, and I will continue to say it. People, like, obviously he didn't light up the stat sheet, but Joe Valino was giving it 100% mm-hmm. every single game. And in years past, maybe even last year, you cannot say that about some guys. Joe Valino brought it every single game, and I think he deserved that t- spot on Team Canada. And if the Red Wings don't pick him up, he, I think he will be a great impact on a team, a different team. But I, I like Joe Valino, and I like what he brings. Obviously, he's only going to be – third fourth liner it doesn't matter but what for what he brings to the team he's been in the system for so long i love a guy like joe valino and i love to see him shine yeah so. and again that's just another one of those guys that when he's right where he is he can contribute on those lower lines and like you said he brings it every time he touches the ice he goes out there gives 100 percent, and guys like steve eisenman notice that like they see him going there because some guys you know, if they're getting third, fourth line minutes, they'll kind of mail yeah. it in and they'll, they'll go through the motions. But no, he's out there. He's grinding. He makes plays. He sacrifices his body and he does what he has to do. So he is kind of a glue guy. It's I don't think he'd be somebody that you need to keep or yeah, he's not imperative. Like go or, out of your way yeah, to give him a bunch of money. Exactly. I don't mean it that by any means. But I, I'm just like exactly what you said. He's a glue guy. He's a good mm-hmm. piece of the locker room. And you've seen when he played alongside Jonathan Bergeron, his former teammate in Grand Rapids, they lit it up in Grand Rapids together. They immediately transferred that chemistry to the Red Wings last season. Yeah. So you love to see things like that. And but, I agree with you when she said, like, it, if the Red Wings don't decide to keep him along, he's going to be in the NHL for a long time. Yeah. Because you and, need guys like that that will be third, fourth line guys, contribute, hustle, play hard. He's going to find a spot in the NHL yeah, for a while. He's a, he's a very, very smart player. Mm-hmm. And uh, for our next topic, I kind of want to refer to our friends at the Grand Line podcast. Us as Red Wings fans, you guys Red Wings fans, me working for the Red Wings as a writer, working for WSN, being their beat reporter whatnot. We are blessed with a great community yeah. between all the personalities we have from Daniela Bruce to Carly to d everything. And then you have great podcasts like the Grind Line podcast, the Wing Wheel. We are blessed. All these guys do such great work. But uh, it was like about a week ago. I About a week ago? <laughs> about a week ago. No, but uh, I seen a tweet that was interesting. And it drew a lot of controversy from the Grind Line podcast. And they had a little trade scenario. Although this one, I don't think this will ever happen. I just love the tweet in general the question in general to kind of get a feel where red wings fans are at because in this town we've been dying for a superstar yeah. people even though dylan larkin's that one to two c they want more hockey town wants more mm-hmm. so jb if you could throw that tweet up spencer i don't think you've seen this so no i did not who says no to edmonton pick 9 17 2023 2024 first william wallander robbie fabry to detroit leon dry and jack campbell no touch <laughs> Because Jack Campbell's contract is horrendous. You got picks 9 and 17. William Wallander, he will be a Red Wing next year. Robbie Fabry, you know, obviously he's battled some injuries, but you've seen what he can do when he's fully healthy. He's a very, very good hockey player, very good two-way player. Obviously, I don't think this trade would ever go through from Edmonton's side. Yeah. But I just kind of want to get your, like, feel for this because, like, this is actually happening, Spencer. Yeah. People think that this is in the realm that we need to go out and get a guy like Leon Dreisaitl. Obviously, I think the price would probably be way more than that. You'll yeah. probably have to put in a more solidified piece, and you probably won't be able to toss in an injured Robbie Fabry. But mm-hmm. um, even in the acts of like a Mitchell Marner, do you think the Red Wings need to go out and make a trade like this? I mean, they have like five picks this year. Yeah, I, I think they do. I think they do. And like, I'm, I'm with you on that. I don't think that would be enough to get it done. I want to know the 15% of people that voted Detroit would say no to that. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Leon Dreisaitl is one of the best four players in the NHL. So I 
do think they need to do something like that because like i said steve steve eiserman is building an army he's bringing in a bunch of guys that will fill up the stat sheet that'll do different things guys that project to be 20 goal scorers in the nhl that you can litter this lineup with but you don't have that one guy you don't have that 50 goal scorer you don't have that guy that's like okay because you know austin matthews leon dry yeah. connor mcdavid is in our lineup we know we're not going to get shut out like yeah. they're going to put one in the back of the net so if everybody else is sluggish everybody else is not doing it you know that guy's going to be giving you 50 goals a year and, yeah. and those people don't grow on trees guys like that don't just sprout up out of nowhere and you would like to see you know steve eisman identify one of those guys in the draft or mold somebody into that but it's not as easy as it sounds yeah. and when there's guys like that that are frustrated on like i gotta think people on edmonton are getting frustrated I got to think people in Toronto yeah. are getting frustrated and what better way to steal one of those guys and be like, Hey, come be a part of the revival project in Detroit. Come be a part of the Red Wings coming back to greatness. Like that, that means something to hockey players. That means something to guys. And I'd love it. I definitely think they need to do it, but the price is not going to be that yeah. little. It's going to be a steep price. If you want to go out there and get a superstar. Um, I, I don't I don't think that is going to happen. Like I hope you go out and do get a superstar, but like in the means of what you're going to have to give up for some of these guys, I don't know if I would do it. Like obviously you're going to hear guys like Marco Casper even being brought up in crazy trades like that, but like I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't mortgage your future like Lucas Raymond, Mo Sider, all these guys, Simon Evanson, they're off limits for me. These are young guys that are growing together. You've seen the chemistry they built in such a short time. The locker room, it's all together. Obviously, you want a superstar, but you do have to weigh your options. You don't want to go throw the whole thing. And, like, obviously, I'm telling you this, but this is music to Steve Eichmann's ears. Yeah. He already knows this. Yes. He's not going to go mortgage their future. He's not panicking. You've seen him, what he said after the trade deadline. He by no means was going to be a buyer. So, mm -hmm. like... Obviously, you want to go get that super superstar, but you have to weigh these options out. You can't go put your team in a cripple. You can't do anything like that. So, I mean, I would love a Leon Dreisaitl or a Mitchell Marner, but weigh your options out. And I got to ask you, if they were to trade for one of those, which one would you rather have? It's got to be Dreisaitl. Yeah. But, like, yeah. it's interesting because you've seen Dylan Larkin talk at the All-Star game about how he loved playing with Mitchell Marner so much. Mm -hmm. And, you know... Toronto just fired their GM today. Yeah. It's going to be a shit show. Who knows what Austin Matthews wants? Mm -hmm. So, I I would love to have Mitchell Martin on like their team, and that I feel like is way more reachable than getting a guy like Leon Dreisaitl, who just went nuts the entire playoffs. But by any means, if we're not going to tear our team apart trying to get one of those guys, I'm all for it. I'll tell you what: the only guys for me that are off limits on this team right now are Dylan Larkin. Simon Evanson and Mo Sider. Everybody else on this team, if it means I'm getting a player of the caliber of a Mitchell Marner or Leon Dreisaitl, I'd listen to it. Yeah, I'm not saying I'd mortgage the whole future and trade Casper and Raymond no. and you know uh, Lombardi and no. all these guys, but no, you 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 weigh it out. You weigh it. Would Would you rather have Mitchell Marner or? Uh, Marco Casper. Would you rather have Leon Dreisaitl or Lucas Raymond? Like it, it obviously doesn't just yeah. boil down to that, but. I'd listen to things. I'd hear things out, and I do believe that Mitchell Barner is going to be a piece that is reachable for the Detroit Red Wings because, I, like you said, man, Toronto just fired their GM. Austin Matthews is, is going to be out. He's not going to re-sign with yeah. Toronto, and they're swirling the drain. Like they, This is a, a ship that people are going to want to start jumping off of, and the Red Wings are on the complete opposite trajectory of that. They yeah. are peaking they are getting to the point where they are a guy a dude a superstar away from being in cup contention yeah. so i i don't know i'm not going to mortgage the entire future for it but i'd listen to, i'd listen to some offers and i'd make some offers and uh, like to your point about toronto they obviously have a lot of superstars and they have a lot of guys that will put your team over the edge but they haven't been able to put it all together on their own team. Yeah. And you see in a lot of these teams in the NHL playoffs right now, yeah, they have a, a superstar, two, three, whatever, one on the defensive end, a couple forwards. But a lot of their teams are depth. Like mm -hmm. Carol, Carolina has Carolina's. been without, like, debatably their best player throughout yeah. the whole season mm -hmm. and for a long time. And they don't have a 30 goal scorer like on their roster. They're all yeah. just contributing. Yeah. And then you look at a team like Flan Florida, obviously, you, mi you miss some guys to injury. You have Matthew Chuck. He's a star. You got some guys on He's the defensive star, end. Man. Aaron Eckblad. I like Eckblad a lot. It, 
a lot of these teams, Spencer, they don't have those crazy stars where you're throwing half the bank to. They have yeah. four lines, each guys that are contributing. So that's another thing to take in mind. Uh, obviously, you're paying Dylan Larkin, and you are going to pay Mo Sider. Or, oh, yeah. Oh, my. I don't want to say you'll lose me. <laughs> they're, I, uh, they're paying I Mo will be one salty person salty if the Red Wings ever move on from Mo Sider. There's no I, way. There's I stressed that. that a little bit on Big D. Yeah. Maybe I showed my fandom too much, but... Mo Sider is one of my favorite players. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I, I don't think I've been this fascinated with a hockey player since, like, Zetterberg. Yeah. And, like, I man, I just love Mo Sider. I It would absolutely kill me. It would eat me apart. Rip, uh, There's no way. There's no, no way. way. Steve, Steve uh, you don't it. fumble bags, but don't fumble that one. Yeah. You never have before. Don't do now. He's not going to. That that's his guy. He is your building block. He is your centerpiece. Like this dude's an absolute stud, and he's only, it's going to be his third year in the league next yeah. year. And like you said, he's already arguably a top eight defenseman in the NHL. Like yeah. the guy is an absolute monster. You keep him around, and the pairing of him and Simon Evanson is going to be a ridiculously good defensive tandem for the in the NHL for a long time. Like the twin pillars of what this team is going to be built off of is Mo Sider and Simon Evanson. Yeah. Um, I have a prediction for next year, too. Mo Sider is the Red Wings all-star next year. Book it. And I already think he's a top eight defenseman, but he's only, only going to move down. And the kid's young. And I think for the likes of Lucas Raymond as well, like he's only like 21 years old. Yeah. Like I'm like 10 years older than him. That's yeah. crazy <laughs> to me. But um, I think he's going to take an extreme jump next year. And just like his rookie season, he's going to have that hype back up where he, it was, and he's going to shut a lot of people up. But – as far as the Red Wings, Spencer, we've talked about this a little bit, but is there a certain guy that you need to break out next season or that you're looking for to break out? Because, I mean, obviously you want you everyone need to break out. You need a lot out. of guys yeah. to break out to be a successful team. But is there any guy that you pinpoint that like, this guy is I the think, one? I think the easy answers are, like you said, a Lucas Raymond or a Simon Evanson, which I think is going to happen because they're, they're still growing. They're still yeah. adapting to their roles. And I don't know if breakout is the right word, I'm but just Michael Rasmussen, man, to, to stay healthy. Because he was breaking out this year. Yeah. He was playing great hockey. And it showed how valuable of a player he is on the penalty kill, playing the wing. He could play center, too. Yeah, he he can do, do it all. So much for this team. That net front presence with his giant frame on top of having, you know, some nice mitts. Have, having, being a skill player at the same time of how big he is. It is what the Red Wings needed. They need that kind of physicality. They need a guy that they can throw out there on the PK, on the PP, in open ice. It doesn't matter. You can put him anywhere. So I'm extremely excited for him. I think he's going to have a really big year next year as long as he can stay healthy because he was poising to break out this year. And we saw, like, literally they had that streak of, what, six games in a row on the West Coast, and, and then Rasmussen goes down, and they start to fall apart. And he was the heart of yes. that six-game streak. Yeah. And to your point, I'm going to pinball right off of that. I'm going to go Andrew Cobb. Yeah. Because, like, obviously he had a down year, but people don't understand that he's coming back from one of the hardest injuries to come back through in hockey, and basically probably in sports in general. But... I think this guy, like you said, when he was playing alongside Michael Rasmussen, it brought out a different Andrew Kopp. And Andrew Kopp, he played for my favorite team, the New York <laughs> Rangers, before that with my favorite player, Artemi Panarin. Yeah. So you got to see a lot what he can do when he has good players around him. And obviously, he didn't put up the points. You want to see more points with how much money you're paying him. But next year, this is going to be a huge step forward for him. He needs to come out and make... That I don't want to say make that same impact he made in New York because you're playing with bona fide stars, yes. bona fide studs. Yeah. But it's you tough. need to come out there and you need to be that two C. I um, mean, you got Mark or Marco Casper that you hope is going to be two, th- two to three C range. Yeah. But you need Andrew Kopp to come in there and slide in and be that veteran presence. Obviously, you know he has leadership uh, capabilities from the past, being a captain at Michigan, mm-hmm. wore the A for a short time with New York. I just think this guy is going to be one of the keys. If this Red Wings team is going to be successful next season, they need Andrew Kopp to go back into his normal self. And I'm not downing how he played last year. I am 100% understandable of what he went through and all the work he put in to get to that point. 
So I'm still on the cop train. Obviously, some people are upset with his contract and what you're paying him, blah, blah, blah. I don't care. Give this man another year, fully off season to recover. I think Andrew Cobb will be a valuable, valuable piece for the Red Wings next yeah, season. Yeah, you need him. Like you said, not only the veteran presence, but that two seat. You need you need another guy. in there Because, yeah, you expect Casper to be that. You expect him to make it, but he's, he's going to be a rookie. Yeah. He, he's, you can't count on that to be your two-seat. Cobb yeah. is solidified at what he does. He's been in the NHL for a long time. Like you said, he's been around great players. He's been around winning organizations. So he need. I, I agree with that too. I think he'll he'll have a good year. I think he'll bounce back, and we're gonna see we're gonna see some more out of him for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, this weekend, yesterday rather, we had the first game of the NHL playoffs on say return. The Florida Panthers. Yeah. Spencer, you stayed up goddamn all night to all watch night. that fucking game. Mm-hmm. You you probably had four hours of sleep in that booth. Yeah, I I fell asleep more towards I want to say it was a second overtime, but it was late. So God knows when I actually fell asleep. But that series was insane. I thought that game was never going to end. And <laughs> when I rewatched the highlights this morning, obviously I saw Chuck goal. Man, he's so goddamn good. He is so good. But. Like, the energy, the funniest thing is when they cut to the team after, like, the third overtime or whatever it was, and they just showed them, like, walking out again. Those yeah. guys look like they were so sick of that. Mm-hmm. And then they panned it on, uh, I seen a Twitter clip on TNT, and they were like, what What do you tell these guys? Like, yeah. someone just put the fucking puck yeah. in the net. <laughs> like, dude, you just got to get it over with. That game was insane, mm-hmm. but both the goalies played phenomenal. Insane. Spencer, you got to watch it. What was, like, your reaction when you were going through? through like was this ever gonna end like who's gonna win are they just gonna call this thing off yeah. postpone it like honestly that's what it felt like and i was <laughs> cool i was ready for a fifth overtime like I, I was ready for it but it was just the physicality the level of play how deep both of these teams are yeah. really showed like because you're not worried about your first line getting worn out because you know everybody else on this team your second your third your fourth line they're going to go out there and they're going to keep that same level yeah. of play that same level of physicality that the nhl playoffs are known for it it, it was extremely impressive to watch these goalies standing on their head, both of them. And, you know, Bob is just a monster out 60 there, man. Saves a piece. Bob is like, a monster insane. out there. And, like, uh, Carolina had so many good chances yeah. to score when I was watching. Like, I feel like that game could have been over within, like, the first five minutes mm-hmm. of overtime. And then it's just boom, 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 boom. Just standing and, on his head, man. And and, it was funny. They cut to the intermission. Like reports in between, obviously the overtime periods, and fucking dude, Wayne Gretzky did not want to be there anymore. He was oh. sitting at the interview. It was like it was the third pe- overtime. He's like sitting like this. You got Biz next to him. Biz is trying to keep the yeah. energy up, and he's the only one. Yeah, man. Wayne the, was not feeling it. <laughs> a lot of people don't like Biz on that table, but I, love Biz, I personally, man. I've always been a fan of the spit, spit and chiclet boys. Oh and yeah, dude, what Biz brings to that table, I think it's a different element. I don't want to say it's up to the level of the a- NBA on uh, TNT guys because Shaq and Charles Shaq and that Shaq is priceless TV Gold. like I would watch that seven days a week yeah. anytime you want to throw those guys on the screen I could listen to Charles Barkley and Shaq laugh at each other all day but Biz I like that but I it had to be past Wayne's bedtime yes. he oh, might yeah. have been sleeping when the actual periods were going on when the overtimes were going on because I wouldn't blame him. I wouldn't yeah. blame him. He was there for a while. They were all there for a while. And you could tell he didn't want to be there. I'm with you, though. I love Biz, man. I think he does a great job. This is awesome, yeah. man. He doesn't deserve a lot of the slack that no, uh, people some give him hate. NHL He's fans. Man. He's trying to grow the game. Yeah. And for what all those spin chiclet guys. And I love spin even, chiclets. Dude. I'm going to speak to the, the Red Wings podcast in this town. Like the wink wheel pod, like all these guys, all they're doing is trying to grow the game. Mm-hmm. So you can't do nothing but that, but respect them. And they put out awesome content, both those guys. For so. sure. Spencer. You picked the Hurricanes to win that series. I did. I picked them to win the cup. Are you still confident that they're going to pull this off? Because these Florida Panthers, man, they're no joke. They're no joke. They are no joke. Matthew Chuchuk is one hell of a player, and we talked about it a little bit on Big D Energy earlier. That was an absolute fleecing of a trade now that it's settled. Obviously, Huberto is a great player. But Huberto is not the same player as it's Kachuk. not it's, like it, it, the guy. It's he's not. a heart trophy finalist. Yeah. Like it, you got a heart trophy finalist and you gave away what? A, how much did Huberto? Have? He had like what fifty six points or yeah. something like the, that. This he year. had half of Chuck's points yeah. this season and I'm, contracts near the same. And it's 
I still got the Canes. I'm riding with the Canes, man. I picked them before the playoffs started to win the Cup. I know Florida is this team of destiny. They took down Boston. They took down Toronto. And now they're going against the Canes. But I think the Canes win in seven just because they're so, such a deep team, man. Yeah. Every single person on their roster has at least, like, 15 goals. Like, they, yeah. they are so deep, so good. They just keep throwing bodies at you. They have multiple different goalies that you can put in there and will give you great performances like the one we saw in – in game one, so I'm I'm still going with the Canes. I'm rolling with them. I think they get it done, and I think they beat the Stars in the finals. I, I do agree with you uh, as far as the series is going to go seven games, but I'm, I think I'm going to go with the Panthers boo. here, man. They, <laughs> boo. boo. No, but they, they are just bringing that different energy, and obviously we brought it up so many times. You look back to last year, this team – isn't as bad as the record showed in the regular season, all the stuff they battled. Now you get to see them at full health, and you got to play this team each and every night. Yeah. One game is at all 60 minutes, and they are a hard team to beat in 60 minutes. They, You speak to Carolina's depth, Florida has the same Florida's thing. Florida's got depth, so, too. I'm going to go Florida in seven here still, but – this this series is undoubtedly going seven. I think like they're Mark, both going seven. Yeah, honestly, I, I would I would like to agree, but this one for sure is going seven games, and I wouldn't hate whichever pick. Drop your pick in the chat below. By the way, we no. want to see which pick. Hurricanes. Who do you think's winning the Stanley Cup? Hurricanes. But I, I Florida. I think they sneak away with this one, and they they make the the run to the Stanley Cup. The, the Cinderella unheard of, run. Yeah. They debatably have. No, they have. They're going to run through the I mean, best they, three teams yeah. in the playoffs they leading the up to – They won the President's <laughs> Trophy last year. Like, it's, it's not like this team was bad. They just got unlucky. They changed the coach, obviously got Kachuk, moved some pieces around, started off slow. They scratched and clawed, no puns attended because they're the Panthers, into the playoffs, and now they're – Destroying Giants, like it, coming back from three-two versus they Boston had teams to win that. lose, so yeah. they could get into the playoffs. Yeah. So they didn't actually. Well, they earned their spot. You could say that. Shout out to but the Penguins. They, they didn't earn it. Yeah. The Penguins lost to the Blackhawks like twice in like two weeks down the series. Yeah. And actually, the Penguins kind of decide off that, but the Penguins lost some crucial games to the Red Wings yes, now. They did. And those points came back to bite them in the ass yes, when Mr. Did. Jake Wallman hit the gritty on them. Those you should game. Sid. Then, so yeah. you got to love that. I'll respect Sidney Crosby, but yeah. I hate you. Yeah. Whatever. But we're going to the other side now, Spencer. Before we wrap up, I need to know your predictions. Stars in Vegas, they play tonight. The Stars are hot, man. They yeah. look very good. Rope hints, he's unreal. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think anyone would have expected him to have the year he had. And like this team, the Stars team, they have a lot of depth too. Yes. Obviously, they have some old heads on their team, but these are good guys. And you got Vegas still Golden Knights. You you get Mark Stone back. Oh yeah, whoa. you get Mark Stone Look back out. right <laughs> when the playoffs start. And what do you know? They're yeah. doing they're doing just fine. But yep. like Jack Eichel and the boys, Vegas, a very deep team as well. Um, Spencer, who do you got? You know, Jack Eichel is probably the best player in this series, but, man, it's it's tough to go against the Stars with how hot they've been. Again, these, these are four of the deepest teams in the NHL, and they're just going at it, man. I got the Stars in seven in this one. I think they get it done. I think they go they go to the Cup Finals for Joe, man. They, they got to get a little Joe in there, and he's been playing great, too. You know, Grizzly dude, vet, dude, man. Dude, it, he had, like, four goals last round yeah. in the game. So, yeah. Joe, Joe Pavilsky's out there grinding. They have some old guys, Tyler Sagan, yeah. Ryan Suter, like, these are guys that I, – well, I can't say Ryan Suter's been there because this is all new to him. But these are, these are guys that that playoff experience mm -hmm. is going to take this team a little farther than – that may have taken this team a little farther than some have expected. I agree. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, man. I have to go the Stars. This like Robertson, like they have a really good team. They have speed. They have size. They can hit people. They, they're aggressive. Like – they have it all. Not saying that Vegas doesn't. Vegas is going to be right up there with them this series. They have played outstanding. Jack Eichel has really made a statement for himself. This playoffs, obviously, he's done well in the past. Body or battled some injuries and whatnot. So this has been a really great run for Jack Eichel. Yeah, and the I'm Golden happy Knights. for him. I'm happy so, for him to be back. Man. Yeah, he dealt with a lot. And really, this it's good whole for the NHL playoffs has been great. Mm -hmm. And. When we touch on the depth again, when we look at both these teams, Spencer, and we relate this to maybe how the Red Wings should build their team, yeah. they're not paying anyone too crazy. Like, no. obviously, Jack Eichel's getting a little bag, but, like, they're they're not overspending in areas. Yeah. They're being very precise with their money, just like Steve Eiserman has done his whole entire career with the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, yeah. like, obviously, people are 
been a little wishy-washy on some of the contracts my guy Steve has given out. But um, I think this is a perfect picture, these last four playoff teams, on what the Red Wings could build into. But, yep, Stars and seven, Spencer. Are you going to – are you – you're still rolling with the, the Hurricanes? I'm still rolling the with the Canes. I'm All rolling right. with the Canes in the Cup Finals, man. Although, I would like to see Little Joe get one. Like, the guy deserves it. He's been around for so long. Obviously, great on, on San Jose for so, such a long period of time. But, yeah, I think I think the Canes get it done, man. They're Because, like, their depth isn't just their forwards and defensemen. Like, they have goaltender depth. They go, like, three deep at goalie. So, it, it's it's pretty wild to see them, them go after it like that. And they got some of the coldest jerseys in the NHL. I love the Canes, dude. I love the Canes colors. I love the Canes jerseys. But the Knights. I think they're. No, I got the Canes winning the cup. Oh, I think you yeah. said the Kings. I Canes. Don't know why. Yeah, I got yeah, the Canes yeah. winning the cup. They got some of the best jerseys I've seen in the NHL, and they're just so deep, man. I I I got Stars versus Canes. I got Canes in six in the finals. And- uh, I kind of wanted to talk about this a little bit, too, because we had brought this up, and you just brought it up again. The, a lot of these teams that are left have great goalie tandems. Yeah. And the Red Wings have a great goalie in Billy Huso, and then they have a lot of question marks, Spencer, mm-hmm. on who the hell is going to be that backup goalie. Obviously, you don't know how Ned is going to transpire over the offseason training camp into next year. And then you got the one and only Sebastian Casa yeah, in the plate blind. Still playing lights He's out. He's been lights out in playoffs. We'll talk about him more next week, actually. But that is going to be interesting to see how much the Red Wings can evolve their goaltending duo to be more like these teams mm-hmm. because these guys aren't throwing out the same guy every night. They have a goaltending duo just like when you – the perfect team related to is Boston. Yeah. Boston didn't know. Obviously, both their goaltenders were great. But, like, on some given nights, they didn't know who was going to play because they were so damn good. And yeah. then in the playoffs, what did they do? They played one goalie for a, a whole lot of games. Mm-hmm. And then they threw that last goalie out in the fire in game seven. And he wasn't ready. And he wasn't ready. Yeah. So, my point proven, you need two goalies. And it's going to be interesting to see what the Red Wings did. But fi- Stanley Cup final, Spencer. Stars Panthers. Ooh, I it's hard not to say this isn't gonna go seven either because yeah. these are I feel like any way you put it, like any of these four teams going in, it's gonna go to seven. Oh, like for sure. we got game sevens to end the NHL playoffs is for basically sure. what we're saying. Um I'm gonna go stars at Edge the Panther, edge the Panthers in a game seven. I like it. And I don't like you said, I want I want to hear your guys' predictions drop them below but like i like i said there's any team you could really put in here all these teams have been playing so well and so consistently yep and i yeah so i i'm excited man I'm drop excited. it below there's gonna be some below. good series but for as for now this is our the end of chomp and puck for this week we got dmac back next week spencer i appreciate you stepping in as, as always, you got your brother. fellow heavyweight easy walking in so we're gonna let you guys get to heavyweights but thank you spencer and until next week chomp and puck we out peace Woodward Avenue, the first paved road in America. Woodward Sports, the first sports network born in Detroit.